ನಾವು ಐ ಇನ್ವೈಟ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಶಿವಕುಮಾರ್ ರುಂಗ್ತಾ ಕೋ ಚೇರ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಕೇರ್ ಕಮಿಟಿ ಎಫ್ ಟಿ ಸಿ ಸಿ ಐ ಟು ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವ್ಯಾಕರಣ್ ನಾಗೇಶ್ವರ್ ಸರ್ ಟುಡೇಸ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕರ್ thank you friends i have a my privilege to introduce dr nageshwar dr nageshwar did his medical graduation from pondicherry university and completed his masters in pulmonary medicines from mamta medical college kamam and post his md he was trained by some of the best teachers of india in the field of advanced and specialized subjects like sleep medicines an interventional pulmonology at national institute of chest disease delhi he did his fellowship in thoracoscopic procedures under dr amir khoja at ruby hall clinic pune and he completed his international course on allergy asthma and immunology at the country's prestigious medical institution cmc vellore he has treated thousands and thousands of patients i can't can't even count them i think there are more than 50000 patients for allergy immunology and allergy testing procedures advanced allergy in specific sublingual immunotherapies and interventional pulmonary procedures all these speaks all these volume speaks a uh, single handedly performed by uh, dr nageshwar of uh, his clinical experience he has widely experience consultants allergy specialists practicing in ashwin allergy center hyderabad and he is active on a project called allergy free india with the aim of eradicating various allergy prone diseases in india he has conducted several seminars under aani that is allergy asthma network india around the world he regularly conducts various events and we are thankful for him to in- come here on our request dr nageshwar ಯಾದೇವಿ ಸರ್ವಭೂತೇಶು ವಾಗ್ರೂಪೇಣ ಸಂಸ್ಥಿ ನಮಸ್ತ 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 ನಮೋ ನಮ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಐಮ್ ಶ್ಯೂರ್ ಅ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಮೈಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗೈನ್ ಸಮ್ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಕ್ಲೂಸ್ ಆರ್ ಅನ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ದಾಸ್ ಲೆಕ್ಚರ್ ಆರ್ ಎ ಟಾಕ್ ಬಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಬಿ ವೆರಿ ಆನೆಸ್ಟ್ if god is very happy in a very good mood he delivers people like dr das to this world i'm telling you i am a doctor i am an immunologist you need to have the complete knowledge of what is there in medicine what is not there in medicine to talk about medicine not knowing about medicine what is not there also such an extensive talk sir appreciate i envy i am not a student of you if at all <laughs> an opportunity you can wash our ignorance out in your you know uh, blessings right the topic of today what i would uh, be talking is something about allergy asthma and sleep disorders now why i need to choose this topic is when we had covid the whole world suffered we used to attend around 200 to 300 calls personally on phone at a point of time we literally you know the after all at the end of the day doctor is also a human being see humko bhi call leke call leke bhul jate ki bhai which patient i spoke and what is the investigation i reported 
It's a huge, heavy thing. One question which came from many people. Doctor, why did my beloved person die of COVID? This was a very common question, post-COVID also. Even today, when we, when we sit in our chambers, we come and uh, you know, we face patients coming to us and asking, why is that my beloved person died? Now, there are so many people who are fat. There are so many people who are smart. There are so many people who are alcoholic. There are so many people who smoke. There are so many people with all vices. Then they are all safe, happy. Then why my uncle at the end of the day? Probably God will be the correct person to answer. But as long as we stand as a person of science on this floor, one connecting thing as an immunologist, as an allergist, I found was immunity and the immunology of a person. Probably one such subject which was not taught in the medical schools. I don't know about the United States and European medical colleges. As long as I'm in India, I'm talking about the environment of Indian medical college curriculums. The topic which was less spoken, the topic which was less taught, has become the order of the day. That's why every word Dr. Das was telling, I was rejoicing, rejoicing because it was very, very, very true to the core and you will not get it in the textbooks. That's what I said. If God is happy, you will have Dr. Das here. Such a wonderful thing. So when I thought that I should talk about something uh, about immunology, probably uh, I would have also presented such kind of slides which are purely scientific for medical students like us in medical college. Sometimes we ask our professors to repeat it two or three times in one hour lecture just to understand what my professor is talking. I can understand that. But I thought I should put it in a very simple way in this 30 minutes or 20 minutes talk so that you go back home and your perspective of understanding your health should benefit you. That's the purpose I am here to deliver. When I talk about allergy, asthma and sleep medicine or sleep disorders, for your kind information, there are around 30% of Indian population who suffers from allergic disorders in this country. There are around 30 to 40% of Indian citizens who suffer from sleep disorders. Now what else can be a such a huge junk, huge piece, huge volumes that we should concentrate upon? So being a person from the line of allergy and immunology, I thought I should share with you. So whenever a person, I mean, I'm equally happy to see a few of my patients here who are there, who have come to me with the same questions. <laughs> but still, I'm not God at the end of the day, I'm a person of science. So what science has taught me, I will work on it, I will think on it and go ahead. So when we talk about allergy, the first question everyone gets is, uh, the moment I talk about allergy, they start itching. The moment I talk about allergy, probably I would have uh, given more than around uh, say 600, 700 talks, very honestly, online, offline, underground, above ground, upper, niche, sub, mela ke bhi. Everywhere when I said allergy, the first thing is they scratch. They are right. They are absolutely correct. But that's not the area alone. Allergy plays importance of understanding. So I thought, let me start from little basics so that, you know, I said, when you go out from this room, tomorrow morning when you look at your human body yourself and say, boss, there is allergy, it's not just a rash. Yaar, uh, banda aaya tha, doctor aaya tha, he just, you know, he, now I understand, correlate things of what that person has told me in my daily walk of life, right? So I start with what is allergy, what is atopy, what causes allergy, why only some of us are allergic, what are the diseases caused by allergies, how do you diagnose allergy, how do you treat allergy and how do you prevent allergy. And this is not alone, I am not going to give a lecture of each and everything for 20 minutes, just touch base and keep moving on. What is important, we are going to eat that, right? Next please. Oh. So allergy is an acquired potential of developing adverse reactions that are immunologically mediated to substances that are harmless to most of us. This is simple thing to understand. I'll put it in a very simple language. Why is that out of four members of the family, why alone me doctor I am suffering with allergy? That's the, again a question when somebody comes to me and says, Mera ghar mein char log hai, mera ko kiyo allergy? Yes, sir, kiyo hota hai mere saath? 
That's a common question. And he's right in asking that. The reason is, it's not a disease. It's a disorder of the immune system. When you talk about a variation of immune system, what does it mean? It means that your cells are hyper-reacting. What cells are hyper-reacting? Your immune cells are hyper-reacting. Why is my immune cells hyper-reacting? There are two major factors. Number one, as Dr. Das has beautifully said, in the mother's womb, it's already programmed. Aake yaha pe naachne ka kuch bhi nahi hai, music laga hua hai, bahar aake jo karna hai, wohi music ko dance karke chale jau pas. It's absolutely in a medical language, it's the immunological language. It is tuned, it is genetic. How it is genetic? If one of the parent is allergic, the possibility of the children born to them being allergic is 50%. If both of the parents are allergic, the possibility of their children getting allergy is 70 percent. Look at that. Look at the data, how, how uh, we get this. And once you get that genetic makeup to get allergies, what is the second most important factor? You can have a genetic makeup, but you need not present a disease. Understand this sentence. If you, if you take me into a laboratory and take my blood samples 100 times and test genetic disorders, 2000 genetic disorders will be there in the, my body. But they will not present a disease. Why? They will wait for the opportunity to present it, to develop it into a disease. Now who does that? We do it. Absolutely right. We do it. How do we do it? Lot of people, whenever I say, when I, whenever I write a prescription of allergy, I said, uh, I, I, I tell my patients, my medicines will not work. My medicines will not work. Yes, my medicines will not work. Why? The medicines are going to give you a temporary relief. What is going to give you more? Sustainable thing is your lifestyle. The way you handle your body. And very, very important point, with the courage given by Dr. Das, I move one step ahead. I tell my, all my patients, the more you meditate, I'm not going to tell you stop your business and go into some sadhu, uh, you know, saffron dress. The more you meditate, the more your brain is tamed. The more the brain is tamed, the bro brain is controlled, your aberrations of hormones, enzymes, they just cool down. They just calm down. And such a kind of things exactly works wonderfully on your immunological cells. How to control is not just by medical thing. It is by controlling your mind. Is there a link, doctor? A lot of people question me. Is there a link between your mind, your thought, your emotions, your anxiety and the allergy? I say yes. There's an entity in science called as battered woman syndrome. It reads as those women who suffered physical, psychological stress and trauma react more to immunological disorders, specifically asthmatic attacks. And this is a fact of science. So, allergy is not something which enters the body and creates a damage. It's already there from the mother's womb. You got it. You have to see that it doesn't trouble you in your life. And you can do it. Can I do it? 100% you can, you can do it. Right? Next. Now, what is antigen? Antigen is a substance that causes allergy. Now, I used to have a lot of doubt. How many allergens are there in human beings? I mean, how many allergens are there that humans react? I was searching everywhere. One, one fine article, around 440 plus or minus 10. That means there are 440 items in a general usable language that your body can react. Can you name something, doctor? Your water bottle, your shoes, your rubber, your belt, your comb, your hairdresses, your water, your washer, your bowl, your belt, your ring, everything. Then wh what is the information that we are getting now? The information is clear and simple. Your body looks through all these antigens as 24 into 7 immunologically mediated camera system. The moment I entered this hall, Suppose this hall is not acceptable to me immunologically. What do I do? I sit on the dais, I say scratching like this. <coughs> Who is telling me to do that? 
my immune system is already built in it is already read everything and the cameras are all 24 hours like a, like a, like a, like you know you know a, a, a vvip goes around he's surrounded by the security guards that the whole mob moves like that the immune system moves with you you enter into a hotel you enter into the cinema uh, 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 hall you start scratching hero gali deta hai you start scratching what is happening here no no i am somewhere i am not feeling comfortable here who is telling you all that your immune system how is that it is acting you have not told anything you have not sent any letter email or anything how i told you you are already printed in the mother's womb and you are just following the footprints of it the time has come that you got to the correct antigens you got exposed now what do we do is basically to make people understand what is allergen how to control it right next antigen can be anything antibody is a substance right antibody is a substance that causes allergic reaction you need to be sensitized to become allergic this is very important uh, as i told you i entered the hall here i am sitting i start scratching why there's something something in this hall where the my immune system has already got exposed bhai this is not acceptable to you it has already told me so the moment i come here my immune system presses the button the buzzer comes how lift your hand lift your hand behind the neck come on scratch 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 who is telling all this why why is this alert coming to me it is because the immune system is 24 into 7 alert right next please yeah i will be more comfortable <laughs> next please this is a very very uh, yeah so when we talk about allergy now the uh, point is clear allergy is not an itch allergy is not a rash allergy is not a sneeze allergy is not a wheeze allergy is not just any other single entity of a disease it is a disorder it is a deviation or a hypersensitivity of the immune cells point clear next now where does it affect it can affect any part of the body i commonly tell my patients doctor sahab yahan pe hota hai kujli doctor sahab yahan pe hota hai bahut bahut jagah pe hota hai main bola kya ye part dusre baju wale ghar ko de diye kya ye to tumhara hi bhag hai this is a part of your body so wherever the blood flows the immune cells they go they do their job they are doing the right job somebody i mean immune suppressant somebody were talking about it today morning a small kid was given immune suppressants i felt very bad you are not supposed to do that because if you start giving immune suppressants i'm not talking about the rarest of the rare cases in general dr das would be definitely accepting the same thing you are not supposed to suppress the immune system because the immune system is like your high level intelligence of the country you may like it or you may not like it it has to work because if it works we will have a good day or a good night sleep if it doesn't work you are equal to a hiv positive patient please understand that so whenever there is an allergic changes it can occur in any part of the body understand that that's as simple as it now when it enters into the lungs your bronchial airways saans lene ki jo nali bolte they try to close what is the first symptom everyone gets not breathlessness that's the biggest mistake everyone tells mere ko saans itna zyada nahi phulta bahut thoda bahut khasi aata hai doctor that's it that's it nothing more and that is the first sign that there is allergic changes in the bronchial airways and any good physician will pick you up right at that level by your history by your atopic history by your family history that could be are you exposed to an allergen which has already enters your lung spaces now we go for a pulmonary function test and try to find out yeah is there a condition of an asthma in your lungs or not we'll decide about it suppose it enters into your eyes you don't get breathlessness you get itching of the eyes redness of the eyes and watering of the eyes we call that allergic conjunctivitis suppose it enters into your nostrils you don't get breathlessness you get sneezes doctor the moment i come to my chamber i sneeze 100 times the moment i get up from the bed oh my god it the day is gone why because there's something in the bed there's something in the place of your house what where you feel that you getting exposed no no sir every day i use 1 liter of phenol mopping everything no no i i put i put you know uh, i hear a lot of people telling this there's a there's a central air conditions above there's a granite below or a carpet below or a beautiful curtains right how is that you can tell that uh, my house is not clean for your information 
I am talking about microbiological levels. Antigens are something which cannot be seen like your pet dog. The moment you call it, it comes with a wagging tail. No, it's not like that. Even if there are thousands and thousands of antigens in my bed, I just can't see them. I have to look through the microscope. And that's the reason when you sleep, you are happy the moment you get up. You may get a wheeze at morning 3 o'clock, you may get a rash, you may get a sneeze. And all these are the parts of allergic manifestations. Right? Next, please. This is something very important. A lot of people uh, think that allergies come only in the younger age and they don't come to the adults. You can have two types of presentation. Either you can get the allergies presented at the childhood, where we call it childhood presentation, or you can show allergies at the age of 30, 40, 50s also. You can be perfectly normal till that time. Suddenly you show a reaction. Kya khun badal gaya? Kya? Nahi na. Wohi to khun hai, wohi to respond, I mean system hai, genetic code wohi hai. So you don't need a permission for your immunological cells to react. What all it takes for the immunological cells to throw allergy is change of an environment, challenge or to the immune system of the body. That's it. Now this slide is very important because any child at the younger age, if he presents with any kind of a symptom, Please do not neglect it. Why? When a child present with any one manifestation of an allergy, that's the flag that you should understand, that you should treat it perfectly, not just by medication. Why? This slide shows. If suppose you neglect the child, don't treat the allergies. You say, my child at a five years age had a rash. I went to the dermatologist. He said some ointments to be put. I put it and he's okay. When he becomes at eight years, he sneezes a lot. I went to the ENT surgeon. He said there is a necessity that I should use a nasal spray. And I used it. The boy is fine. When he was around 15 years, 20 years, he got a respiratory uh, difficulty. I took him to the pulmonologist. He said he's an asthma. And when he's now almost at the age of 30, 40 years, doctor, I don't know what has happened. He, he develops severe itching of the eyes with rashes. All that what he suffered in the younger age is not allergy. Now what he's suffering could be allergy or need not be. Could you please tell me doctor why he got it? You miss the child at the age when he first presented the symptom. And that in medicine is called allergic atopic march. We are taught from day one in immunological classes that in childhood, if suppose there is any symptom, do not neglect it. Do not just suppress it with a symptomatic treatment. Next, please. Yeah, this is how the allergic march uh, picture looks like. I, I think I have explained you. Next, please. Yeah, this probably uh, in the field of allergy and immunology, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not so blessed as the uh, uh, immunologist of US or Europe because immunology is a subject which is just coming up in India. So every bit of my knowledge, every bit I come across, I would love to share with everyone because every single sentence spoken from senior doctors will help thousands of people to come out of the suffering. This is one such thing that uh, this uh, kid came from London and he, we tested everything I, uh, possible uh, in four or five sittings for an allergy screening we did for the kid. We couldn't look at anything and we, we suspected from the history. For your kind information, allergic history taking is almost around 40 to 50 minutes per patient. So the traditional way of seeing patients, 200, 300 patients in a day is a dream for me. I can't do that. Because in a whole day, max we can do as an immunologist is hardly 10 to 15 patients. Because we need to go into the history of three generations, how the genetic makeup is. And this kid had a beautiful history, genetic history, atopic history, that he had allergies and he was born to the allergic parents. And now we notice that this kid developed chocolate allergy. Next, please. So immediately we, we thought we should share it to the people. See, I strongly believe that medicine is not just the domain of doctors, it is about the people's knowledge for their health. So being as a medical journalist as well, so I immediately take it into the thing so that on a public domain we should try to discuss so that people will safeguard themselves. They need not come into my chamber always, but they can always be alerted. Right, next please. Next please. Yeah, this is a simple allergy, modified allergen skin prick test. We do it. Uh, 
probably uh, the youngest kid I have started doing this is around uh, seven months age. In US and European countries, they do it absolutely at that age. But in India, we, we tried to do that at around two years of age. But there was a kid from Kenya. Uh, they had a lot of hope. They came to my center in Hyderabad. So I did not want to refuse them. So I had to speak to my professor, uh, Dr. P.K. Vedantan in Colorado University, immunologist. And I asked him, I took my permission. Guru permission is always required, right? So I asked my guru, sir, this is the case. What should I do? Will you ask me to go ahead with it or should I refuse? He said, do it with all precautions because sometimes anaphylactic shock can arise. And for it, by God's blessings, uh, we have done around, say, 22,000 patients or something like that. And we have done around 10,000 plus allergy screenings. Not one patient literally landed up into any kind of anaphylaxis because we are always on the toes whenever we touch the patient because allergy looks simple, but it's equally deadly on the opposite side. Right. So this is a simple allergy testing. So that's how we do it. Uh, and after 10, 15 to 20 minutes, you see a reaction on the hand and we measure the reaction based on the type of the reaction. We compare it with the saline and the histamine. And we decide what is the allergy you are suffering with. Next, please. This is a pictorial uh, thing. How do we do it? Next, please. Yeah, this 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 is a London kid. We did it on the back. Next, please. This is how it looked. Look at the reactions the baby has shown. Highly positive, highly positive. Right, next please. Yeah, this is the thing whether we gave the note. Here I just wanted to uh, bring it to your uh, information that we look into the high histamine levels. A lot of people uh, don't understand what is histamine. It is histamine. If God was merciful and he had not released histamine in human body, probably there would have been no allergies. That's the reason whenever you have an allergy, you go to the medical shop and ask for antihistamine. So the histamine levels are very high. In this kid, uh, uh, saline was around uh, 3 or 4 and its histamine was 30. It's almost very high. So we decided that we put him on antihistamines diet. What is antihistamine diet? As I said, as an immunologist, I look less towards the medication and more towards the lifestyle. What is high histamine diet? You eat more of chocolates, you eat more of cakes. You eat more of non-vegetarians for a particular period of a time. Masales, garam masale, all these things add high histamine in your body. And that is to be immediately stopped for a certain period of time. Next, please. Look at the serum Ig levels of this kid. 2,500, more than that. Normal is around uh, 100. So it's almost very, very high. Next, please. Yeah, so we started looking at this condition. We started, it's, you know, uh, it's like a life of pie. You know, we are dropped into the ocean. You have to survive anyway with the tiger. So, so we, we, I take all that uh, energy levels to see that every bit of a patient, every bit of a citizen around us, we try to educate them. So we started this new initiative as Food Allergy Detective Campaign. So this, I got it from my uh, professor who was guiding us just to make people uh, understand. By the way, for the uh, information of the August audience, food contributes only to the 25% of the allergies actually they really get. A lot of people think that the food is the major or no, food is only 25%. The majority is non-food items, environmental allergens. That is something we should never miss, right? Next, please. S right, uh, this is uh, what I said was uh, the seven year old kid, uh, sorry, seven months old kid we performed. Uh, that could be the, probably one of the rarest of the rare cases performed in, uh, in the country, right? Next, please. Yeah, this is something very interesting. Why I'm presenting case by case is if I talk immunology, it is going to be huge and it's going to be really burden for you. So case by case is something very interesting that you can take home. See, this is a, a, a couple came to me and they were planning for children and, uh, and a lot of tests they had undergone. They had gone to the gynecologist and ultimately they were not successful for six, seven years. Somebody from US told that uh, uh, looking, looking into their history, they said, please go to an immunologist in India and talk to them. So they came to me, I was really surprised because I asked them, why did you come to me? I'm not a, uh, a infertility, infertility specialist or a gynecologist. Then they started opening up that they had problem and we investigated it. And this is the semen allergy that the women suffered and they literally suffered in the bed. And when, 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 when such a things happen, definitely 
the conception rates go down and they land up into different difficulties right this we guided them to a good infertility specialist for a simple uh, ivf procedure so that uh, you know they get into the right track and god bless them to have children right next please so this uh, we doing such kind of allergic procedures we are now uh, training young doctors we have been going around the country and other places to see that more and more people come into allergy and immunology more and more 30 percent of india's population look at that number probably i always say so many doctors are there so many patients are there and the number of doctors who are actually practicing allergy core allergy and immunology in india are hardly 100 and the number of allergy patients in two telugu speaking states is 2.5 crores and the number of doctors practicing core allergy and immunology is hardly two or three so we require more hands more than requiring hands we require more hard work to go to the people and help them to come out of the disease next please so we are thankful to our uh, honorable chief minister for giving a permission to launch the national toll free number we are the people who have a national toll free number you know you you, you babe, any part of the from kashmir to kanyakumari just, just give a call they drop up a message and we get them back and say boss what is your problem and we guide them to the nearest qualified allergist and immunologist so that they don't land up into dangerous deadly anaphylactic condition next please yeah when i speak about anaphylaxis a lot of people should be carry home message is very important allergies are not simple yes they are simple but sometimes if you neglect they become the killer disease anaphylaxis is a condition a life threatening condition where out of 100 people who suffered with anaphylaxis 17 to 20 percent they don't return back so that's a dangerous deadly condition in immunology next please so what is the treatment doctor what do you give for children or adults this is the sublingual immunotherapy in us they used to call shots now uh, the order of the day is giving sublingual immun everything has come sublingual now the polio drops even the corona vaccine has come sublingual even uh, allergy we have the sublingual immunotherapy which works wonderfully we we do by god's blessings we almost treated around 5000 to 6000 patients on allergic immunotherapy next please yeah this is a simple pic taken right next please yeah what do you do you have been to so much talking about allergy what is that you can really do doctor number one again i said it's not the doctor who can help you in allergic diseases number one avoidance of such food which are positive in your allergy test next please yeah see this is something very important i would like to take a a, a fraction of a minute uh, taking your attention into a very important area out of the 440 allergens, only four allergens are called the major allergens. Why do you call this major allergens? If any one of them are positive in an allergy testing to one of or four of these major allergens, their allergies will increase multifold. If any one are positive to one or more of such major allergens, there is a treatment failure always. If anyone is positive to one or four major allergens, the possibility of them landing up into polysensitization and poly organ involvement. That means they say, doctor, 20 years back, I just had an itch. I took the medication, it subsided. But now, doctor, I had sneezes, I had asthma. Oh my God, I had sinusitis, I did a surgery. But I don't know why I'm not recovering, doctor. The culprit could be the four major allergens. And what are there? The house dust mite the parthenium, the alternaria, and the cockroach. You heard it right, the cockroach in the house. You never thought that the cockroach was so deadly. Yes, it is. Right, next please. These are the simple presentations of how food allergies, food allergies need not always present as an itch of a skin or an itch of any part of the body. It can present as a sneeze, it can present as a pain abdomen, it can present at you know, any kind of an asthmatic attack or anything. Right, next please. Yeah, this is something which, again, I, I took a, a advantage of being as a medical journalist, put it immediately into a, we, we, we formulated a 25-year-old study, again, latest uh, study being conducted on 1,000 patients who visited our center, and saw what are the major allergens that people are suffering in this region. We are likely to release that, publish it. Surprisingly, for your information, mosquitoes are dominating. The mosquito allergies are dominating and mind you, the children are literally suffering with mosquito allergies. You never, you never realize that mosquitoes can develop such a horrible reaction. Even I was like that. When I gone into the literature and saw, oh my God, Skeeter syndrome they call it. So 
So we are now looking into very, very new allergens coming up, which were really not there previously, 10 years, 20 years back. Mosquito allergy almost in the top three, top five level, right? Next, please. Now, this is a beautiful magnified picture of the house dust mite. Now, how does this affect a human being? It doesn't come and bite you, nothing to worry. But what it does, it eats your dead cells of the skin when you drop off. Every human drops the dead skin. So when you lie down on the bed, some kind of a skin, scales of the skin drop. It eats that and it tries to trigger an allergic reaction. So it is found in your bed sheets, pillow covers, mattresses, uh, very cushioned, high, good sofas. And you give a number of medicines. He will recover and get back into the same suffering. The reason is house dust mite. Unless and until you remove that. Doctor, I have seen everywhere there is no house dust mite. Honestly, even I can't see that. I already told you. It's a highly magnified picture of a house dust mite, which is almost in the top of the order of the major allergens suffering, the, I mean, making the human suffer. Next, please. House dust mite, that's what I said. Uh, most common allergens. Next, please. Yeah. They prefer the warm and the moist, moist conditions. Next, please. They live on dead skin scales. Next, please. Yeah, all these things. Next, please. Next, next, next. Yeah, next. This is just for the completion sake I'm putting. Next, please. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was telling you. Anything. So we thought the carpets are good, the curtains, the sofas, the covers, the soft toys, all these things, you know, the house dust might grow there. That's the reason we say the allergen is with you in the bed. That's what we say. You are literally sleeping, not alone, but with the allergen inside your bed. So you have to be very watchful. That's the reason it takes a lot of time as an immunologist and allergist to, you know, get that history. When did it start? What time it did it start? And how do we go? Next, please. The fungi and molds. This is, this is something very important. I told you, alternaria is a fungi. This is something very important. And nowadays, with uh, increase of central air conditioned halls, you know, uh, fungal uh, uh, molds coming up, or in old buildings where, the, where there's a crack of an old building, there's a water oozing around, you get that smell, stinking smell inside the bedroom or the ha room where, where there's a wall getting that change of a color. Now it slowly keeps emitting uh, fungus in that room. That's something very serious. Next, please. Suppose you, you take that fungus inside your body, you get the fungus embedded in your lungs. Suppose it comes onto your contact with the skin, you get a rash. You can't, you, the fungus enters into the eye area, you get itching of the eyes. That's how it goes. Next, please. Next, next, next. Next, please. Yeah. Mosquitoes, these are something very important. Uh, uh, we will come up with how to deal with it in the later talk. If at all uh, there is an opportunity, we'll definitely discuss. Next, please. Next, next, next. Next, please. Yeah, then I'll take it, right? Yeah, one piece of an information about pollens. For God's sake, if you are an allergy patient, do not go out on a cyclone affected day or a day with this heavy gale or a rain because for your information the pollens are so light they travel around 200 miles from the source of exit that means from the trees they can travel 200 miles suppose from there is a cyclonic effect in Warangal the whole millions of pollens will just get up into the air travel with the clouds they can go and shower anywhere now you come out on that breezy day, you feel oh, it's so cloudy here, come on, let's go for a bike ride. You keep riding the bike and they keep running you after you and ultimately you get exposed on your skin. The moment you reach home, you get a rash. I don't know why it's so pleasant outside, why I'm getting a rash? The reason is heavy pollen. In US, we call it pollen tsunami. That's, what, that's the word that they use it there, right? Yeah, that's what I was telling. Yeah, coming to the last part of the obstructive sleep apnea. As Dr. Das has very correctly said that everything is the same, the names are the different, the departments are different. I was amazed looking at the Institute of Biological, uh, Biology Inspired Engineering, probably I should look into it and I will see if God blesses we should get into that. That's a very interesting thing because allergies, asthma and sleep medicine or the sleep disorders carry the same type of cells which damage your tissues. To cut the story, I mean story short, obstructive sleep apnea is a deadly condition where literally 
your breathing stops at the throat i will not take a you know medical language a pharynx or anything it literally gets obstructed in your throat and your lungs suffer with hypoxia your brain suffer from hypoxia and ultimately your heart is made to work with no reason because it's innocent heart is a simple sincere organ the brain sends the signals to the heart telling that boss you are not working properly i want more blood with oxygen you beat 100 times you beat 200 times and it keeps beating at the end of the day person with snoring person with obstructive sleep apnea they land up into sudden cardiac death syndrome all those people who died at the at the timing of night 1 o'clock to morning 6 o'clock 60% of them suffered with obstructive sleep apnea and the very condition of sudden cardiac death syndrome the patients who suffered with stroke cerebral stroke paralysis what you call it in general language 50% of them suffered with obstructive sleep apnea this is the situation where we are and we don't know we go to bed god was so merciful that he wake he wakes up, up normally and we are able to come to our work right now who gets sleep apnea these are all the literature i would not go into the the symptoms of uh, often the first signs of obstructive sleep apnea are recognized not by the patient but the bed partner many of them many of those affected have no sleep complaints this is simply important because almost many times when i ask do you snore said, no 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 i don't snore i sleep comfortably silent the wife said oh my god he snores a lot doctor i'll show you from my mobile But this is this is a common thing and we ask the partners does your husband snore He said yeah i have a recording of him his son snore oh my god horribly bad and that was a very good video evidence that yes snoring is not always dangerous but it could prove dangerous in certain individuals causing obstructive sleep apnea in who it is dangerous and why it is dangerous need to be investigated and a simple investigation the polysomnography makes you clear that are you into the danger zone is your heart affected is your brain affected and you can just start the treatment at that place right these are the i'm coming to the simple thing how do so that you have been talking about allergy asthma and obstructive sleep apnea can you tell me one two three four points how do you uh, in the house diagnose uh, that i am having with obstructive sleep apnea or not if somebody ask number one the moment you get up from the bed you have a dry mouth the moment you get up from the bed you try to drink water more the you, you try to go into your routine your calf muscles pain you come to the office you try to concentrate the focus is lost you get irritated you are left in your chamber secretary doesn't disturb you you are just lying down with a bit good air condition in your chamber you doze off sir may i oh i slept off i really don't know i'm sorry i look tired you come back home and tell your wife i am not understanding why i am sleeping in the late time and for your information this is a very important piece of information people with obstructive sleep apnea should not be in risky professions the profession is not risky he becomes risky to the profession what is that suppose you are a pilot driving i mean lifting your craft almost at the a height of 33000 feet from the ground level you get that sleep what would happen that's deadly suppose you are a, a pilot engine train engine driver you get sleep in the long run one hour don't no one disturbs you that's deadly suppose you are working with some technical tools machinery is lot of industry people are involved they are managing with the cutting things chopping things their fingers get cut we do lot of patients we see like that we don't diagnose we don't go into the probe of it why this is happening to us the simple thing is that you need to investigate for sleep apnea even children for your kind information children also suffer from obstructive sleep apnea which is very surprising for indians because in us they they are very well aware of it and they are doing a pretty good job melatonin and immune function good sleep causes good release of melatonin this causes good immune system response to the function and good growth hormone levels this promotes healing melatonin good melatonin levels is equals to good healing melatonin is released in the night time if you don't have sleep in the night you feel that you are working extraordinarily level well. you are literally making your melatonin in trouble that means the levels are disturbed that means your healing and your immunity is getting disturbed put it in such a simple language right 
the unified airways 80% of the children of asthma have allergic rhinitis and 40% of the children of allergic rhinitis have asthma allergic rhinitis causes almost 88% of the sleep problems to the patients and this can be due to the difficulty to sleep or multiple night awakenings there's a belgium study which clearly states the children with asthma suffer with obstructive sleep apnea two times higher note that point two times higher rates that, that's that is the way how the children are also affected allergies and sleep disturbance yeah, this is very very important it is underlined that children who snore have 30 to 40 percent of allergic sensitivity you know the micro aerosols the sleep disturbance are 10 times higher in the children suffering with allergic rhinitis now uh, everyone are uh, aware probably majority are aware that there's there's always one word which comes in our corona phase cytokine storm cytokine storm cytokine storm everyone look into that il6 levels ferritin in levels and all that right we did we did all of them uh, at least one in the family l did that investigation now all that immunological basis of obstructive sleep apnea associated with cytokine release there's a rise interleukin 1 there's a rise interleukin 6 there's a rise tumor necrosis factor alpha all these three promote the t helper cells to produce more th2 increasing the chances of allergic manifestation i would not like to go into the depth of what is th1 th2 because it's again an immunology it will unnecessarily take disturbance of your thought and night sleep also allergies and asthma and sleep. lack of sleep has been related to an exaggerated allergic hypersensitivities one study found that the sleep deprivation made people with peanut allergies more susceptible more susceptible to have an allergic attack lowering the threshold of peanut exposure required to trigger an allergic attack by 45 percent look at that figure it simply means suppose i'm allergic to peanut i eat peanut chutney or i eat peanut some kind of a podi or anything whatever it is normally i take volume of 50 grams if i have an obstructive sleep apnea if there's disturbance of a sleep and everything even the five grams will trigger an allergic reaction that's the link between the sleep immune system and your allergies right if i would be able to make you clear on that point i've done my job this is the circadian rhythm this is probably uh, 20 years back or 15 years back when there was a boom of you know the it sector coming up in hyderabad there were beautiful articles which were coming i was reading that suppose you are extraordinarily working hard please do it but if you are sacrificing your sleep think twice because there's a biological clock in your body which demands a normal tuning as how it has to run. There, this is a beautiful circadian rhythm where every time is being recorded by the immune system or the body or the biology that this is the time where the melatonin is released. This is the time when the histamine is released. This is the time when this chemical is released. This is the time with hormone is released. You name anything that is related to the circadian rhythm. And if you are disturbing this, what is this? This is the biological clock. What your body literally needs. And if you don't sleep properly or if you are having sleep deprivation or if you are having sleep arousals or you have suffered with obstructive sleep apneas, the circadian rhythm is disturbed. And that's the starting point of the diseases or the exaggerations of suffering, right? The circadian rhythm, immunology and allergy. Circadian oscillations of immune mediators coincide with the activity of the immune system. This prepares the host immunological memory to anticipate and handle microbial threats more efficiently. These oscillations may also help to promote tissue recovery and the clearance of potentially harmful cellular elements from the circulation. Now, immunological basis involving inflammatory media. Just now, Dr. Das was telling inflammation. Inflammatory media is common for allergy and obstructive sleep apnea. The histamine, the interleukin-4, the interleukin-1-beta, and all these leukotriene receptor antagonists, all these things are linked with a common thing. Same thing you see in allergy, the same thing you see in asthma, the same thing you see in sleep, apne I mean sleep apneas. Right? Increased airway resistance. There are two ways that that uh, major mechanism which works increased airway resistance where is the increased airway resistance in the throat that's what i said in simple language it's like somebody putting you know throttling you hanging you that's how the patients suffer in the night you should be very much aware in a simple language i'm trying to make you understand increased airway resistance due to increased inflammation of the soft tissue or nasal mucosa reduction of pharyngeal diameter resulting from mouth breathing that moves the mandible inferior 
Now the sleep and immune system are closely connected in a two-way response. The sleep and the immune system have a bidirectional immune response. Viral infection affects sleep, thus disturbs body immunity. Consistent sleep strengthens the immune systems, allowing the balanced and effective immune function. This is very important. As an immunologist, allergist, and asthma specialist, I see among the virus, fungi, and the bacterial invasion, human immune system suffers more, disturbs more in a viral invasion. The virus is something, that's why they say viral toxemia. In Telugu, there is a saying, Chinta Jachina Pulupu Chavaledu. That means that you may, you may treat a virus with some kind of antiviral, but the post viral effects could be deadly. And that's the reason post corona effect we are having a lot of complications because the immune system is disturbed. That we need to understand. Chronic fatigue syndrome in America, Dr. Das would be very much aware. Chronic fatigue syndrome is something which is in going in high numbers. Good athletes, very effective, very, uh, you know, high mo mo mobility. Athletes also, good working potential people also, they are now suffering with chronic fatigue syndrome. All that is attributed to your disturbance caused by the virus. Now the immune system is interactive, I'll just can sleep. Yeah, this is something to close with. Uh, very important carry home message. Sleep immunity and vaccine immunity. Getting sufficient hours of good sleep, good quality sleep helps a well-balanced immune defense that offers strong innate and adaptive immunity resulting in efficient response to vaccine and less severe allergic reactions. Good sleep helps the brain to consolidate learning and memory. Research suggests that good sleep strengthens the immune memory. Interaction of immune system components during sleep reinforces the immune system's ability to remember how to recognize and react the dangerous antigens. The dangerous antigens can also be your microorganisms. Please understand that. It can be anything. Anything which triggers your antibody, anything which triggers your immunity, we call that an antigen. It could be a virus, it could be anything. The mechanism, the pathogenesis and other things are similar. Now, this is a very important study. I would just try read one sentence. Studies of the vaccine for hepatitis and swine flu have found that when people don't sleep the night after receiving a vaccine, the body's immune response is weaker. In some cases, it reduces the vaccine's protection and may even require a booster dose. Now you understand, even after getting that booster dose, a lot of people as a pulmonologist, I get, sir, I got bo both doses, sir. Why I am getting that corona infection again, sir? Because you are not sleeping. You are not allowing your body to sleep. You thought you became a superman, he-man, and other man, but you are not a human man. First, you should allow to sleep yourself. Why? What happens in sleep? your immune system gets strengthened. That's the carry home message. Now, vaccine breakthrough infection. Studies underline the reduced vaccine effectiveness in adults who habitually fail to get at least seven hours of sleep. People who get insufficient sleep may not give their bodies enough time to develop immunological memory, potentially leaving them unprotected despite having vaccinated. Look at this point, very important. Now. Now, this is something very interesting. I found it from my uh, uh, international course of uh, pediatric sleep medicine. I found, check your sleep hygiene, how many hours you are required to sleep. And you can really go back and look into your children or adults, whoever are getting sleep. Are they really sleeping well? This is, this is the recommended from American Sleep Foundation, right? Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir, for your valuable information and presentation. Um, we are pleased to inform you that Dr. J. Ajay Kumar, Commissioner of Telangana Vaidya Vidhana Parishad, uh, he is not participated today he, due to his uh, busy schedule. So on behalf of the Commissioner, we invite Dr. Vinay from Telangana Vaidya Vidhana Parishad to address the members. So good evening to one and all, and uh, I'm thankful to Fitzy and uh, giving this opportunity. And I am fortunate, and uh, my boss Ajay Kumar is unfortunate to attend today, and uh, he is busy with the uh, health minister Garu and uh, health secretary Rizvi Garu in uh, some sort outing of uh, government programs in the health sector. So he is busy, and he said uh, apologies from his, uh, behalf of him, and uh, he sent me to give address to here. 
thank you and good afternoon to all eminent and dignitaries on this dais and one and all uh, it's my privilege to address this event behalf of dr ajay kumar garu and being a commissioner of telangana vaidyadana parishad in health sector we are uh, serving nearly about 172 institutes in our uh, state uh, that too in dialysis and uh, blood banks and uh, what not total knee replacements and all sort of all specialties under control of Commissioner of Telangana Vaidyavidana Parishad, there is 350 bedded hospital to 30 bedded hospitals. In that total, 172 hospitals are there. In that, recently, Fitzy Shekhar Garu and his team approached us to involve in health sector, and uh, we want to do some activities in health sector also behalf of Fitzy, and he attended our office. And our sir promised and uh, we brought that notice to Health Minister Garu and uh, Health Secretary also. So your people may come and uh, be better to visit once and we uh, facilitate to have a talk with uh, sir and Health Minister Garu. And you will be knowing, well aware of Health Minister Garu. And we can do behalf of us whatever we can help and along with your cooperation through the FITC to the common public of our state. And... Uh, I acknowledge the and appreciate the speakers of uh, Dr. Nageshwar sir given very excellent. I didn't heard Dr. Das sir's uh, lecture, but uh, some questions I'll ask after the my speech to Dr. Nageshwar sir because there's a common questions to be asked uh, to know the common public because uh, most of you are not doctors maybe there may be non-medical people you should know that one and we are uh, giving the best services in the health sector so far. And on behalf of us, once again, I promise you to facilitate and uh, facilitate or uh, provide the sector of health from totally from our side in government sector. Because we are giving, not earlier like that, we are now giving very good service in the government sector now. Because all hospitals are improved, all facilities are improved. After health minister involvement in personally to the public, uh, small PSC2, community health center and uh, area hospital and district hospital and every sector. So in this manner, he is giving very, very good uh, budget also. So in this junction, FITSI people came to us and met and we are happy to serve with you, with your cooperation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Varandal. Thank you, Varandal. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I request president to present a moment. Uh, sir, one, uh, sorry, uh, open uh, this uh, floor is open for questions, sir. If any questions, please. Yeah. Uh, two things, Dr. Vakanam. One is about his rhinitis. Uh, this is mainly because of the concept called hay fever, and it's mostly allergic, which forms because of the mucus. One, is there a natural process of reducing this, or there should be a surgery? What well, second thing is about sleep apnea. Sleep apnea mostly. Uh, most of the doctors suggest that kappa, that airway system for uh, reducing it. The second thing is removal, removal of the adenoids and the mucus thing. What do you suggest uh, as the best? Yeah. Again, as a doctor of allopathy, person who perfectly believes, preaches and practice allopathic science, I tell my patients, allergic rhinitis to kapal bhati, allergic rhinitis to jalaniti. What is this? As an allopathic specialist, you are talking this. Rest of the things, anyway, we are going to do. What you patient should do, we should tell that. Jalaniti cannot be performed by me for the patient's sake. The patient should conduct Jalaniti. What is Jalaniti? It's a thousands and thousands of year old technique in India, ancient country, simply taking up hot saline water into one nostril and removing it through another nostril. How does it help? Just now, uh, the, the uh, question the gentleman asked me, a lot of mucus gets plugged up. That's the way your mucus gets clean, even without a single medicine. That's a very excellent way. Our ancestors were doing that, and we should do that. Next, I was running through the lecture of uh, an international course in sleep, pediatric sleep medicine. 
one of my professor was telling me one of the simplest way uh, uh, of doing it making your positive airway pressures inside your throat is taking up air inside holding on and removing the air exhaling air through the other nostril what does it do i mean how do we call that in our ancient thing pranayama you know this is a very very simple thing we forgot we were not doing it anyway medicines will be applied anyway the modern concepts will be applied that is my job what is the job of the patient patient has to do certain practices in the house alone taking medicines again i underline alone taking medicines doing nothing will not help you to heal fully number 1 do certain things when allergic rhinitis jalaniti works wonderfully in us it's called pot niti someday i went to the google and saw oh my god it's so much of costly thing that just they used to casually do it how we brush our teeth in the house that's that's we we you know every house used to have this some elderly grandfather grandmother telling us to do this we should do it it's a good practice right next is what i am telling you the uh, the therapy in obstructive sleep apnea the pranayama technique works wonderfully well that is what i would recommend sir right yeah from the beginning from my childhood i used to sleep at 2 o'clock now i am sleeping at i used to sleep till the last 3 years 4 o'clock now i am i am sleeping at 5:30 last 3 3 hours i listen to the songs i get up at 1:30 or 2 because i see that 8 hours sleep is there and i used to do pranayama and also uh you know Uh, kapal bhati uh, not kapal bhati jalaniti no uh, taking this uh, hot uh, air you know acha yeah. inhalation yeah <coughs> i'm not finding anything fault but do you suggest any because i'm trying because the cycle has been set so is 8 hours sleep is necessary or i have to change my sleeping pattern yes sir got your question sir thank you now uh, very important aspect of understanding whether 8 hours are sufficient or not is determined the quality of the sleep it is determined by the quality of the sleep somebody says i slept at 7 uh, o'clock got up next day at 10 o'clock but attended 20 calls from my manager what do you call that sleep as fragmented sleep and it doesn't help you in any way it only helps you for just to understand that you were lying on the bed attending the calls that's all so the quality of the sleep is something very important we say the micro arousals also getting up from that normally in sleep apnea it happens even without your knowledge involuntarily when your oxygen levels hypoxia comes up when the level of the oxygen goes down the brain automatically sends signals how the moment the oxygen levels in the brain goes down though you are sleeping <coughs> you cough up you change your position and sleep to one side who is making you wake up all this your brain it doesn't sleep it's aware 24 into 7 it is awake so what is important i would say that a power nap in between in a day's work for a 15 minutes yes good there's nothing wrong about it but what is more important is undisturbed sleep that is what we have to look into right sir thank you sir next any other questions please sir sir one last okay. question sir uh, what is the cost of biologicals for the psoriasis patients <laughs> because because why i am asking this is a very uh, eminent people and aged people or uh, like high profile people will be having commonly psoriasis <laughs> so for that i am <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, yes sir i'll answer i'll take your question sir yeah, please uh, uh, uh navin sir asked me dr vinay i am sorry sir dr vinay asked me yes i agree doctor sir tuberculosis is a poor man's disease allergy is a rich man's disease that is how it has become like that but for your kind information but for your kind information when cell phone has even reached the beggar's hand in the country he is not spared 
he also is now leading the same life as how a multi millionaire is leading in the house unable to sleep talking over the phone answering to the phones at midnight 2 o'clock with an ac full above his head and a carpet below his feet there is no difference everyone is going through the same phase coming to psoriasis that's a very important area probably uh, 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 ftcc i would i would request the august leadership of this board to look into it is very very apt question you have raised sir has told about biologicals yes biologicals have a very good role initially we used to have omalizumab even now we are giving omalizumab but for your information one omalizumab 10 years back was costing us around 30 40000 rupees we used to import from us lucky we are that in this country now omalizumab is sold for around 7000 itself but even 7000 is a very high cost for a common man and there are so many biologicals which have come up i would not like to name because we should not talk bad about any brand but 160000 is one injection of biologicals 160000 and the person needs to take 3 to 4 injections like that remember it and one common question patients ask me doctor i will spend 5 lakhs on this in, in injection am i getting cured can you guarantee me that's because he is he is well very correct questioning me but the answer is i can't say because how your immune system response is not under my control neither under your control what you can control is preventing the trigger of that psoriatic flare and your lifestyle modification right sir yeah sir uh, you i'm sorry sir uh, i got carried away with the signs of yeah. answering <laughs> if anyone having the allergy they are taking some medicines after reducing is it permanent curable or continuity it will be there yeah i'll take this if questions. any dust allergy yes sir or anything is there if dust allergy is there if yes, sir. Uh, permanently i should not go on the dust yes sir or yes, sir. Uh, every time i has to take the medicine when i am going to the dust yes sir yes sir i'll answer this sir i'll take your question sir there's an angry kid in your house out of the three kids or two kids one kid is extremely irritant and angry how much long time he can stay calm every time he gets irritated first job of the parent is to calm him down cool him down doctor how long my child will behave like this how long my child will get irritated and angry like this immune system reacts like that it is difficult to predict one in one's immune system how it responds because again i come back normally to put the long answer short normally i tell my patients if you go through the screening if you find the trigger avoidance of the trigger for the next 1 to 2 years helps your immune system not to produce such a kind of antibodies like ige which trigger t cells i mean to say t2 cells that's why i avoided too much of immunological discussion where in which in future your immunological system will produce t1 and not t2 if you produce t2 you will have serum ige more if you have serum ige more there's more of mast cells blasting out releasing histamine if there's more of histamine in your blood there is equal to more of suffering so again i come back to the answer lifestyle modification is a must we train you we set you and leave you for next 10 years you can be free of that you want to be free of the whole life the chart and the route and the map is in front of you that's it thank you sir uh, doctor uh, beautifully you explained everything but as you said that telangana andhra and telangana both you said lot many cases are there but there are only three doctors are yes, there sir. considering telangana Sir. uh how many doctors you think will be good numbers to take care of our population of telangana sir as per the last survey it was told that there are around 2.5 crore patients in two telugu speaking states right. of allergic disorders now looking uh probably telangana half, you can half to half, half, half or 1 1.5 right. so looking at into that kind of a picture i think at least you should have 100 100 doctors handling this because you know 
the allergic suffering doesn't switch off like a malaria treatment. Yeah, yeah this is an organism, this is the chemical of a drug name, put it on that yeah. and you are free. This is tuberculosis, this is the organism, this is the drug, put it on it, you're gone. It's not like that. So our lifestyle changes are extreme nowadays. The pollution is extreme nowadays. The style of living has changed. So you will have more number of allergic disorders and immunological That's disorders okay. coming no, okay. in newly every year. So we need more number of at least 100 minimum to start with. Okay. We require 50 to 100 specialists to come up into this field. So we'll be needing your further inputs for that Please, in order sir. to take it forward. Yes, thank you so Do much. Dr. Vinesa, Dr. Vinesa, there is a very good input for us that we need 100 allergy specialists, yeah. uh, right? Sir is asking same question that uh, as we are having 33 medical colleges and uh, district hospitals also in all districts, anywhere we can, we can plan with right. your uh, involvement and uh, in medicine. thank yeah. you. Yeah, that should be really, uh, FTCCI can really do a major change because industrial sector, let me be very honest with all of you, industrial sector where people are working round the clock, you know, getting exposed to a lot of uh, allergies, pollution and all these things, we really need, need to look into that because the productivity drops down. Right, per perfectly right. The target is the productivity should be sustained with good health. Now your productivity is lost, your health is lost, it's a major area of concern. Right, so uh, thank thanks. you, thank you, thank you very much. Let's work together, all of us together, to yes. create a healthier society. Uh, Shivji? Uh, yeah, I have... This is not a question, but uh, I have an observation and comment on Dr. Das. Dr. Das, uh, you have made such a technical, scientific, and research-oriented uh, presentation so simple, mm -hmm. so simple that it was interesting and simple to understand. And I'm carrying one thing, a major thing I think from your uh, speech for a common man, that eat less, mm -hmm. eat less food because foods create inflammation. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm as such eating yeah, yeah. less food, but I think is the required food towards the lesser side. So you will not have problems in life. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And we also got superintendent of the Natural Care Hospital, Dr. Malti. Thank you very much, Madam, being here. And Bhavani, Dr. Bhavani, so we can work together yeah. so, uh, for the better a, society. Uh, for completion sake. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Natural Care Hospital. No, no I, I, I respect every Good profession. Evening. Everything is God's blessing to cure the human beings. I mean, the temperament of thought. Uh, definitely, ma'am, we'll look into it. One, one more thing for the completion yeah, please, sake, what please. sir has told. The immune system, how it works is, you know, the immunology side, Dr. Das, how he said, it is ever developing, ever growing, and ever active. As long as you are alive, we require a backup support, backup. and yes. that is the memory of the immune system. Amazing. Everyone need to work on it at different platforms. Not that only allopathy, I'm, I'm against the school of thought, no, allopathy should treat it. Yeah. No, allopathy will be our primary focus, right. but at the same time, Ayurveda can do it, right. homeopathy can do it, I may not treat, as a person of science, I'm an yeah. allopathic. I will treat only allopathy. It doesn't mean that everyone should be treated by allopathy. It's the choice of the patient. Let him go anywhere. Ultimately, every human being should be happy. happy. Perfectly. That's Perfect. it. Thank yeah, you. So, doc doctor, you got something? Good evening, sir. Good yeah. evening, all, of, all the doctors. Yeah, please. And thank you for giving me this opportunity of uh, expressing my views also. Uh, I was immensely happy and uh, to have more knowledge from eminent personalities. And my, this one is what my experience of 30 years of our nature cure, very simple system of uh, promoting health. So we always believe in promoting health and propagating health. <coughs> we, uh, like uh, our school will always teach only health, not the disease side, uh, the other side of the coin. So however, this, uh, knowing about the disease is also very important. And our system, as all of you, all the doctors were talking about immunity and infection and inflammation, that sir and uh, sir was talking about. So the pranayama or kapalabhati are the less food what we eat. So what we say is surya hara, amruta hara, nirnita hara, sampurna hara. So these are the concepts what we say. So the nirnita hara means uh, as we said, uh, it's very less food and designed food which uh, 
according to the characteristics of the human uh, nature, like individual's nature. And uh, it's always the individual who has to understand self-analysis, what we say, like Swadhyaya. Uh, that is what uh, we have learned. And uh, combining with, uh, like whatever I learned, that should be evidence-based medicine as per uh, our uh, latest technology, latest this one. Yeah. So I'm thankful for giving me this opportunity. Th and uh, the the Again, all the say, lifestyle yeah. modifications uh, we are doing in our Nature Cure Center, sir. And uh, every month we, till now, uh, every month we address uh, 100. It can be take letter on that. Yes, sir. Th yes. Thank you very thank much. much we will be in touch with you. And yes, we'll take sir. It yes, sir. Final, with the permission yeah. of the chair, yes. before yes, I could sir. close in five seconds, sir. Yes. Very, very interesting thing. Chess Research Foundation Pune did a survey. Yes. Yes. The answer is, where does the human get the energy from? Biryani? Yeah, from sun. Oil diet? What? Grass? Sun. What? No. It's not the food which is primary for the energy levels of the body. It's the vayu. Vayu. It's the vayu. It is crude concept. So don't, you don't breathe properly. You don't breathe the good air. How are you going to be healthy? That is the jiva. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. So Thank you. Good one. Uh, last one, Dr. Das. Uh, sir, uh, beautiful talk of yours. Great learning. Uh, immunology, how to build up a strong immuno immunity. Simple, simple, simple words. Yes. <laughs> Eat less and do exercise. <laughs> exercise has many benefits, Very actually. Good. So if you do exercise, see for example, uh, how do we know that a person is healthy by looking at him? Okay, that is very important. So whenever I travel with my wife when we are in the airport waiting for the flight to board, I tell my wife, this fellow is having this disease, this fellow is having this disease, <laughs> just by looking at them. She says, why you, you think about diseases even in the airport? <laughs> see, one of the characters of the Indian population is what is called as abdominal obesity. Okay, so that should not be there. If your chest is at a lower level than your abdomen, that means you are not healthy. Very, very simple. Huh? Pardon? Your abdomen should not be at, uh, yeah, you should not be at a higher level than your chest. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I tell correct. So I I tell patients that what was your weight when you were twenty years or uh, twenty five years of age when you were in college? You were slim, you were very active, and then whatever you are eating, you are digesting, and then by digesting because you are doing a lot of exercise, sports, running, whatever it is. Okay. Whereas what are we doing now? The diet has increased as we are aging, because now you have more money to eat more. <laughs> and then your exercise has gone down. So you are on so much, too much of a positive side, and so you put on weight and your abdomen bloats. And the, the abdomen bloating shows that you have insulin resistance. And that's a cause for many diseases. All right? Right. Okay, if you can keep the stomach like this always, you can't push your abdomen uh, 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 inside by physically, by physically. It, it, it is not physically possible to do that. You should do more exercise, that's very simple. Uh, thank you very much, doctor. And I, I think many of us will be having... Sir, uh, this uh, last question from our... Huh? Ha, please, last question from our Vice President. Yeah. Uh, can I put it in Hindi? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Hindi, Tamil, 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 उसके बाद में मैं हमारे डॉक्टर मूर्ति साहब हैं, he is no more in this world now, है केजीआर मूर्ति, केजीआर मूर्ति, उनके पास गया, वो मेरे पड़ोसी भी थे, तो 
मैंने कहा डॉक्टर साहब ये छींक आती है मेरे को एलर्जी है क्या है जरा बताइए फर्स्ट टाइम दैट वाज अबाउट 15 इयर्स बैक आर सो तो उन्होंने कुछ नहीं बोला बोले है एलर्जी है आपको आधी गोली मेरे को लिख के दे दिया टू टाइम्स मॉर्निंग हाफ टैबलेट जेलटेक जेलटेक बोलते हैं आधी गोली सुबह आधी गोली शाम में मैंने पूछा डॉक्टर साहब कितने दिन लेनी है अप टू द लास्ट ब्रीथ उनका आंसर था मैं आई वॉज शॉक्ड मैं बोला यस yes, बोले अप टू द लास्ट ब्रीथ वो लोग थोड़े गुस्से वाले भी थे गुस्सा करते थे बहुत मतलब एंग्री मैन थे मतलब डॉक्टर थे एंग्री मैन थे वो उनके सामने कोई ज़्यादा बात भी नहीं कर सकते बस जाना आपकी बीमारी बताना उसका लिखा के प्रिस्क्रिप्शन आ जाना बस उतना ही काम था वो तो कुछ बात करोगे तो गुस्सा करते थे तो मैंने गलती से पूछ लिया अपना डॉक्टर साहब ये दवाई कितने दिन लेनी है बोला अप टू द लास्ट ब्रीथ गो ऐसा बोल तो डॉक्टर साहब मैं पूछना ये चाह रहा हूँ ये एलर्जी की दवाई लास्ट ब्रीथ तक क्यों लेना है उसका कोई दूसरा समाधान नहीं है कोई दूसरी कैन वी डोंट हैव एनी थिंग एल्स अदर देन दैट या डॉक्टर के जे एन मूर्ति इज माई टीचर ही वॉज द मैन हु गॉट माई हैंड एंड फर्स्ट डिड माई एलर्जी टेस्टिंग अंडर हिम ही वॉज द मैन हु टोल द वर्ल्ड पब्लिक प्राइवेट पार्टनरशिप बिफोर के जे आर मूर्ति सर देर इज नो वर्ल्ड पी 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 इट वॉज के जे आर मूर्ति डॉक्टर साहब हु टोल द वर्ल्ड हेल्थ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दैट वी कैन वर्क लाइक दिस is a man who brought clinton to hyderabad he was clinton spent 45 minutes with him to understand the signs and how it goes to the public coming to the point straight he did an excellent job wonderful job you know why what is this is what you are simple what you eat is what you are sir was telling eat less absolutely correct your gut biologicals will decide the micro uh, thing will decide what you are how you will affect that's the reason in corona we had that gut lung access those who had weak abdomen weak gut will suffer more from viral diseases if your stomach that's the reason our elders used to say achhi tarah khao achhi tarah khao no that's a correct thing achhi tarah bole to zyada nahi eat nutritious food that's an important point so what he did was absolutely correct he was trying to set your flora and fauna there in, inside the gut he was doing correct even today we practice even today we put such kind of medicines for allergic patients and the last thing you asked how long i have already answered how long you can make your child not to shout cry and scream till you make him understand that crying screaming should not be there same way how long you will suffer with allergy till the day you don't understand your body your lifestyle or you don't change how it suits your body you will have suffering your medicines are temporary i make a statement medicines are not going to help you life long they will help you to come out of the suffering but what you need to do more and last thing is check your lifestyle come into a lifestyle which suits your immune system more work up more good sleep sir was telling lion sleeps more in the night doesn't roam in the jungle that's why it's called a king so you have you do if you are a king you have to sleep correctly in the night so the sleep is very very important which we have neglected since decades i think i answered this thank you sir dr sahab ek usi se related hi hai sir can we have during the tea sleep with me i don't sleep in the day time never but and even the in the night also i sleep at almost 11 o'clock 10:30 oh, but immediately yeah, i don't get sleep yeah i get sleep only after say 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock and then i want to sleep after 7 o'clock also because that sleep is getting after 2 3 o'clock and then i feel that i should be still i should sleep डॉक्टर <laughs> 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 Over to Vishal. Uh, and I know all of us. We have got a lot many questions over the tea. All of you Thank are you most all. welcome. 
Um, now I request uh, Mr. Anil Agarwal, President of FTCCI, to present a memento to Dr. U. N. Das. Thank you, sir. I request Senior Vice President Mr. Mila Jayadev to present a memento to Dr. Vyakarnam Nageshwar, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I request uh, Vice President Suresh Kumar Singhals uh, to present a memento to um, Dr. Professor P. Redanna, President of FABA. Thank you, sir. I request uh, uh, Mr. B.P. Acharya, A.S. retired to present uh, a memento to Dr. Vinay from Telangana Vaidya Vidana Parishad. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I request, I invite Mr. Mila Jayadev, Senior Vice President, FTCCI, to propose a vote of thanks. Very good evening to all. Thank you very much. Shekhar, sir, actually, this, uh, like this uh, discussion events uh, will be in the Sunday. 10 o'clock, we have to start. Uh, and with the, all the family members, with the uh, children, uh, above 16 years children and all the people will there, then people will know what is happening and uh, when the sleeping is there, uh, when wife is not getting uh, sleep, uh, uh, <laughs> sleep, <na? laughs> then you <laughs> we can... Jayadevji, suddenly next, will next tell, time with the spouse. <laughs> don't disturb if he has to sleep, uh, there is a problem will come. All those things. Because of that, you arrange like that meeting, but, but it's very but excellent. But all health seminars are open for, uh, along with the spouse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you very much. I'm extremely happy for uh, proposal of RT. <coughs> Vote of thanks to G.N. Dasu, eminent physician, silent scientist, and CEO, UND, Life Science, WA, USA, and Dr. Vijay V. Nageshwaragaru, Palmanajist, Allergist, Immunist, Founder, Director, Ashwini Allergy Center. And Dr. Vinay Telangana, Vaidya Vidyana Prashat. And thank you very much for coming here, sir. I thank the members of Health Committee, Managing Committee, and past presidents, FTCC, and other industries, government officials in Telangana, Health Department, participating in this event who is on online also, so many people are on, more than 30 people are online, uh, they are listening that, not sitting here all one. Uh, most of the people are in the, yeah, it's a, most of the people outside, uh, they are in, I mean, uh, online meeting uh, <laughs> since half an hour, so many people are there, that's why I saw that. I thank you, Sanjeev Kumar Agarwal, Landmark Builders, for their support. And I thank you, FABA, for their cooperation to organize the event. I thank you all the members of the Health Committee, FTCC, for making the arrangements, ensuring the smooth conducting this, of this meeting. Last but not least, I would like to thank to inform the audience without whose participation and involvement, no such meeting is completed. I hope that delegates got benefited from today's webinar. I also thank press and media their coverage for that. Thank you very much. Have a good night to all. Men sleep early. I request to please join for the high tea, sir. <laughs>